our small children. We shouldn't do anything as scripture tells us to provoke them. We should be training them up. Amen. So it tells us what we need to be doing as we as we treat our family members. Amen. So I'm winding down. Our seventh principle uh, is discipline. And that is in uh, Hebrew 12 and 6. Hebrew 12 and 6. God disciplines those whom he loves. Amen. Now, an immature Christian, they don't want discipline. Let's, let's just be honest. But the more we mature in Christ, the better we're going to be equipped to accept discipline from God. And think about that. Think about what discipline is intended for. It's intended to, although it restricts us, it also protects us. And it also builds character within us. Yes, yes. So if you're disciplined to do a certain thing, that's going to build character up in you. So here's an example. I had already shared with you guys that I did the entire Bible reading challenge. And we started with 20 people, and we ended with three people, only three. But that tells you how disciplined we are or are not. Amen? I even posted this on my Facebook page, inviting other people, not just from our church, but people in general. I had a pastor who wanted to join, and I never saw him. So we have to be disciplined enough to be able to do what's going to draw us to Christ. Amen. 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 Right. So when people contact you, just say they call you, what do they expect to hear? Do they expect to hear a comforting word? Do they expect to hear encouragement? Do they expect to hear gossip? Like you know the latest, Larry calls them the town criers. So they know everything that's happening in the community. I don't care what it is. And my aunt, she said, I need to find out what's going on. Let me call Kina and, and figure this thing out. And I'm just like, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the person that, that you think I know everything that's happening. Because I don't know how you perceive that. I mean, knowing, you know, I know I want to be in the know, but I don't want to be the person that be like, girl, uh, yeah, that happened. I know, girl. Like, I don't want to be that person. Amen? So, as I was going through that Bible reading challenge, I was faithfully post things uh, on my Facebook page. So, I'm always posting scriptures. And because of that, people then started to contact me when they needed prayer. So, they would contact me if they needed prayer for themselves, for their children, or for other family members. And that's the reputation I want to have. That's the character that I want to be able to, to develop more and more and more. Amen? If you, as a matter of fact, one of my classmates calls me the Joyce Myers of Pontiac. And I, I laughed when I heard it. I'm like, that's cute. <laughs> but it was also a compliment. Amen? Because that's how he, he actually perceived me. Amen? So, number eight. And this is the biggest one of all. Eternal life. That's the benefit. Amen? And that's in John 11 and 26. St. John 11 and 26. If we believe in God, then we will never die. So the fact that we have faith in him and we accept him into our lives, he gives us that eternal life. Okay? Now here's your homework. Nine and ten. Nine is victory and ten is protection. So through him we have victory and through him we have protection. Your homework is to find two scriptures. 
related to victory, and related to protection. Amen. Because the preacher can't do everything for you. Let's just be honest. So things we, and sometimes y'all need to fact check. As y'all taking notes, y'all need to fact check and go back and see if what the preacher's saying is right. Because we make mistakes too, amen? So we have to be able to make sure that we're standing on the word for ourselves and not because of what we were taught. Because some, I mean, some, the word tells us false prophets out there. Amen. We're not sitting under one, but we, we got to be ready. We got to be able to know the scripture for ourselves. Amen. Amen. So because of these benefits, because of all of these benefits, personal relationship, Holy Spirit, transformative powers, peace, hope, having a church family, having discipline, having eternal life, having victory, and having protection, we really should be in better health. Think about that. If God is allowing us to have peace, that's what that communion was about, people. His, for his stripes, we have healing and we have peace. And he took away our sins. Amen. That means that we shouldn't be chronic warriors. We shouldn't be worried about everything. Because worry will bring sickness upon your body. Amen. So we are eliminating some of those things. Uh, gossip, backbiting, and those types of things. We really should be in better health. That means that we should be constantly suffering with high blood pressure, stress, depression, and isolation. Now I'm not saying you're not going to experience these things. But we shouldn't be chronic receivers of these things and walking through those things. Amen? I had a cousin who uh, was diagnosed as a diabetic. And he was walking around telling people, I'm a diabetic. I'm a diabetic. And he was saying it like it was a badge of honor. And I'm like, that ain't nothing you need to be getting attention about. If you were attention seeker, do something else. But I was talking to his wife and she said the same thing. He just wants attention. And that's his way of trying to get it. He wants people to feel sorry for him. I said, oh gosh. But again, if you are experiencing depression or stress or isolation or whatever, it's so many benefits in this word. So many benefits in this word that we can turn over to him. And we don't have to experience that. Amen? Amen. So what are you willing to die for? What are you willing to give up? Even if it's a family member that you just got to turn over to God. Turn that thing over. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. What are we willing to die for? Even, even your spouse. Like Larry knows he's second place to God in my life. Amen. And he's all he's okay with that. You're not okay? Boy, you know you're second to Jesus. Don't play. But yes. Because some of us uh, we unknowingly worship people and we should not. Some people worship their children and they should not. Think about the people that got caught up in that college scandal. They would do anything for their children to get into that college. Amen? That's a form of worship. If you would do anything for someone, that's a form of worship. Amen? And we know we should only be worshiping one person. And that's God Almighty. So I ask, at this time, if you need prayer, for anything, 